Namaskar. My name is Dr. Meghadipa Chakravarti and I am working as assistant professor in the department of management studies at Vanasthali Vidyapit. Today I will talk about design thinking and effective problem solving approach in the con contemporary era. Let me quickly take you through the structure of my discussion. I will introduce the concept of design thinking, its characteristics, philosophy, historical background and approaches. I will also discuss the five important steps in design thinking and how different frameworks can be applied in the application of the design thinking. Let me begin the discussion with a question. Do you think design thinking is practiced or applied by designers only? For example, we often see designing component in footwear, garments, jewelry designing or architectural designing as historical design began equated with aesthetic and craft and designer being considered as aesthetic savants. If we think so, then my answer would be disagree with yours as restricting design thinking to exclusive domain of designer is a myopic view. Design thinking is much more than only being aesthetic. In reference to this, I would like to refer to this, the quote of Kripendroff who stated that most outsiders see design as an applied art as having to do with aesthetic unlike a solid profession unto itself with technical knowledge, skills and responsibilities to rely on. Insiders to design by contrast talk of innovative ideas coordinating the concern of many disciplines being advocates for users and trying to balance social, political, cultural and ecological consideration. It is about applying the principles of design to the way people work. If we consider all great innovators, be it in literature, art and music, science, engineering and business, we can see them using design thinking in their work. Thus, Design thinking is identified as an exciting new paradigm for dealing with problems in many professions, most notably information technology, business, education and medicine. Design thinking is not limited to designers but should be part of a managerial task and hence can be done by all types of people and can be part of the business strategy. Let's understand what is the philosophy behind design thinking. While talking about philosophy, I must mention about an interesting discussion laid down by Manuel and Lefer, where they mentioned that every individual in a society has love towards innovation or inclination towards an idea that sells and design thinking is based on this truth. They also stated that Unfortunately, this idea has always been considered as outcome where the process for achieving the goal could not attract much attention for discussion. There is lack of clarity on the question like what would be the process for anybody to enhance the probability of successful innovation from the research, development and marketing in which investment is made. In uncovering the answer to the following question, researchers, thinkers from the multiple field began to raise a question, what are designers and engineers really thinking and doing when they create products, services and enterprises? These questions enlighten the curious mind that there is a powerful approach for innovation known as design thinking, which is human centric and which integrates human business and technological factors in problem forming, solving and designing. It has the potential to integrate expertise from multiple disciplines from design, social sciences, engineering, medicine and business. It blends end users perspective with multidisciplinary collaboration and iterative process to produce innovative product system or services. It enhances the environment towards learning through conceptual prototyping. Thus, we can conclude that the philosophy of design thinking is based on the idea to enhance human-centric problem-solving approach with integrative, collaborative and iterative process to produce innovative product, system or services. Now, so what is design thinking? 
Design thinking is both an ideology and a process concerned with solving problem in a highly user centric way. The underlying belief of the design thinking is that the people who face problem are the one who hold the key to their problem's answer. Its process is empathizing with the people to explore the unattended needs by listening to their voices, understanding their beliefs, values, motivations, behaviors, pain, gain and challenges based on which innovative and creative solution is conceptualized. Thus, design thinking is different. Its characteristics explain how design thinking is different. Characteristics of design thinking Exploring the problem space When exploring a problem space, design thinking acquires an intuitive, not fully verbalized understanding mainly by observing cases or scenarios as opposed to the formulating general hypothesis or theories regarding the problem and synthesize this knowledge to point of views. Exploring the solution space is the second one. Design thinking asks for a great number of alternative ideas in parallel and elaborates them with sketching and prototyping techniques. In this manner, ideas are being consciously transformed into tangible representatives. Iterative alignment of both spaces is the third characteristic. These representatives of ideas and concepts facilitate communication not only in the design team but with users, clients and experts as well. Thus, design thinking helps to keep in touch with the problem relevant environment and can use this information for refining and revising the chosen solution paths. After having conceptual clarity about what is design thinking, you may think why to use design thinking and how it can be applied. To respond to the question means the purpose of design thinking. I must say we live in a world of increasingly wicked problems, be it in any sector, private or public, be it at the global or local level. Organizations of all sizes and strips struggle with thorny issues in the realm of so much of challenges with large or big simple or complex problems, innovators consider design thinking as significant approach which has the potential to bring something new to the conversation. In addition, the four rules of design thinking justify its importance in much significant manner. The four rules of design thinking are the human role. All design activity is social in nature and any social innovation will bring us back to the human centric point of view. The ambiguity rule. The ambiguity is inevitable and it cannot be removed or oversimplified. Experimenting at the limits of your knowledge and ability is crucial in being able to see things differently. The tangibility rule. Making ideas tangible in the form of prototypes enables designer to communicate them more effectively. And the last, the re design rule. The design is redesigned. While technology and social circumstances may change and evolve, basic human needs remain unchanged. We essentially only redesign the means of fulfilling these needs or reaching desired outcomes. Now let me take you to the application part. Design thinking is different as it has a collaborative engagement of mindset and attitude. It is considered as an engagement of heart, hand and head for which design thinking is known as heart on, heads on and head on approach. Heart on refers to the empathy, adaptability and courage. Head on refers to the beginner's mindset, emotional resilience and open mindset. It encourages individual to come up with new ways of thinking which encompasses of divergent thinking, system thinking, emotional intelligence and visual thinking. Imagination and synthesis. Hand on means skill specifically method and tools used in design thinking and this includes reframing, ideation, iterative prototyping, sense making, facilitation, co-creation, collaboration. 
Now let me take you through the historical journey of design thinking. You must be thinking design thinking is a very new concept but if we consider the history we can trace it back to 1960. From 1960 to 80 design thinking was known among the people in data science and engineering and as a whole more in the context of their academic domain. However, post 1980 which is also considered as second wave of design thinking the focus to understand how designer got the idea where no one else got helped Nagel Cross and Donald Sean investigation to provide opportunities for other profession like social sciences to emulate brainstorming and other creative thinking techniques. Donald Sean work explained the importance of self-reflection to a successful design process. His work not only influenced design but the field of organizational learning. After that period from 1990 to 2005 is considered as period for the emergence of service design. During this period there was a rise of service design and their emerging technologies that focused on complex problems created an environment for a new way of design tools including for non-designers to participate in design. Since the time of EDO merger, design thinking became more popularized across sectors and disciplines. EDO attracted some highly influential people to join them from both academic and design practice. At the time, they also invited experts from fields like anthropology, business strategy, education or healthcare to guide the design team and processes. They created multidisciplinary teams and gained recognition with several awards within a few years of starting. They managed to popularize the terms design thinking and human centered design, launched educational program at this school, authored several books and embed members at prestigious universities worldwide. David Tom Kelly and Tim Brown are the people who played an important role in establishing the importance of design thinking in the contemporary time. Now design thinking finds a foothold in the business world. Design consultancies including ADO and other have laid the way in adapting design thinking for business. So do you think design thinker think differently? or they have very specific characteristic. So let's see how design thinker think. Are they different from others? As per Valerie, although the nature of design thinking and what makes one person a designer and another not remain elusive, a number of characteristics have been identified and can be useful in understanding how a design thinker thinks and approaches issues. These are the sum of the characteristics as defined by them. Human and environment centered concern. Designer constantly question whatever been created in what way it will respond to human need. They should also consider environmental interest at a level with human interest as primary constraint for the design process. Ability to visualize. Designers work visually that is depiction of ideas. Predisposition towards multifunctionality. Designers develop broader canvas of the problem but address the specific problem with multiple alternative solutions. They also have the characteristic of systemic vision. Designers should treat problems as system problems with opportunities for systemic solutions involving different procedures and concepts to create a holistic solution. They also have the ability to use language as a tool. Verbal explanation of the creative process that lead to invention with clarity and precision that is explanation should go hand in hand with the creative process. Affinity for teamwork. Designers need to develop interpersonal skills that allow them to bring people together from various disciplines and departments and communicate across leading to better mindset within an organization and every team member is encouraged to bring along their understanding of things. Avoiding necessity of choice. 
that is also another important characteristics of design thinker tendency to search for best alternatives with new configuration prior to choice making or decision making for solution with best possible choices.